Everybody, let's start with the uh, roll call. Commissioner Jones? Here. Uh, Commissioner George? Here. Uh, Commissioner Waldy? Yes. Chairman? Here. Okay. Thanks. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I know. Under the ring of the shop. Mr. Lotto is here. All right. Okay. Good stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Good saying. Good saying. Good saying. Good meeting with public notice. Notice of the meeting was given to follow matter. Notice of the meeting was transmitted to the Home Ministry Tribune. Said notice of the meeting had a copy of the general file in the office. City Clerk on February 26, 2018, and said notice of a copy of the agenda were properly posted on the announcement board in the lobby of City Hall, 78 Baird Street, in Brunswick, New Jersey, at least 48 hours prior to the conveying of this meeting. Excellent. Excellent. Before we consider the meeting minutes, I wanted to uh, read the public comment uh, for those that weren't here uh, last time. Due to the necessity of getting through specific portions of our meeting, the public comment portion of the meeting has been moved to the end of our meetings. This will allow the board to finish all its requisite business prior to the public comment portion. This will also allow the public to hear all other business before, comment, before the comment portion. Second, public comment is limited to five minutes per speaker in order to allow every speaker the opportunity to be heard. We believe that this limit is reasonable and will provide sufficient time for speakers to make their point and to address any issue that they choose. If a speaker becomes unruly, I will gently wrap and ask that they come to order. If a speaker continues to act in an unruly fashion, I or any board member on their own initiative may move to stop the speaker. If the motion carries, the speaker will lose all remaining time and will not be permitted to speak again at the meeting. The First Amendment pro prohibits the government from abridging freedom of speech. Our goal is to provide a space for uninhibited and robust discussion of public issues, and the board understands that may include vehement language or sharp attacks on the members of this board and the Housing Authority in general. In public forums such as this meeting, heightened, heightened protections are given to the exercise of free speech. And our goal is to make sure those rights are protected for every member of the public who attends our meeting and seeks to comment. However, the right to free speech is not absolute. And a government entity like this board may impose reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on speech in a public forum so long as those restrictions are enforced without discrimination. That means that the board does not have the power to silence people with impunity Rather, the board must apply the rules to all speakers equally, whether we agree with the content of their message or not. The board has a right to impose regulations on speech that are unrelated to content, even where those regulations may have an incidental effect on some speakers, but not on others. A public body has the authority to control its proceedings by stopping a speaker who is disruptive or who fails to keep the subject matter on the agenda, or whose speech becomes irrelevant or repetitious. The board has a right to prevent badgering, to prevent constant interruption, and to safeguard the rules of decorum so that the meeting may be conducted in an orderly fashion. The First Amendment does not require that the chairperson of a board stand by while a meeting is disrupted or when a speaker attempts to hijack the proceedings. With all this in mind, I hope that we can conduct our meetings in a civil and orderly fashion. We look forward to hearing from any member of the public who wishes to speak on the issues before the board this evening, so long as they do so in an orderly fashion, and we really welcome your comments. With that, why don't we move to uh, consideration of the meeting minutes? Chair, uh, we were going to forego those given. Oh, that's right, that's right. We're going to forego the meeting minutes. Let's move right into new business. Resolution number seven is a resolution authorizing and approving the payment of bills for the month of January 2018. Is there a motion? I move it. Second? I'll second it. Okay. Roll call. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Rivando? Yes. Commissioner Giorgiani? Yes. Commissioner Waldy? Yes. Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, resolution number eight is resolution authorizing and approving an interagency agreement between the Franklin Housing Authority and the New Brunswick Housing Authority. Great, is there a motion? I make a motion. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Ovando? Yes. Commissioner Giorgiani? Yes. Commissioner Waldy? <coughs> you want an yeah, explanation? Yeah. Is that, was that an abstention? Or no, no, he, he, he wanted an explanation. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chair, as you know, um, we have had an interlocal agreement with the Franklin Housing Authority for many, many years. 
It has included uh, both management services. This is a mirror agreement from last year um, and uh, has already been um, approved by the Franklin Housing Authority. Uh, it was actually drafted and, and reviewed by Wilentz, Goldman, and Spitzer, our special counsel, and we're proposing that it be for the same amount um, of income. It's an income generating agreement, which means we're providing a service to generate income uh, for the Housing Authority directly. I'm sorry, was that Commissioner Walby? Yes. Oh, okay. And Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, resolution number nine is a resolution accepting the annual audit for the Housing Authority of the City of New Brunswick, FY63017. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Roll call. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Rivando? Yes. Commissioner Giorgiani? Yes. Commissioner Walby? Yes. And Chair? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Okay, item uh, item six, old business. Any particular old business? Chair, I would like to just put in my report in, mm -hmm. in this section, mm -hmm. if you if we would please, yeah, please. Yeah. the public comment. That's old business. A um, couple things. Um, we uh, I, I want to thank the uh, members who uh, answered our call for the resident council election committee. Uh, we have six people that volunteered. We held a meeting uh, yesterday with three of the individuals who could attend. Uh, we went over the uh, procedures for that committee that will be working with the Board of Elections as well as uh, Bill Elias um, to uh, help create the formation of the council and also to hold the elections. I'm very much looking forward to that happening. Uh, and I hope, uh, right Gretchen, that we can get it done by April 15th-ish. <laughs> so, um, but again, um, I, think, uh, I think it's a great step forward. And um, I, again, I'm just appreciative of the six residents who did volunteer to serve on that committee. Great. Uh, great. Other than that, um, staff continue to work on, on their winter projects. Um, and and um, that's all I have. Excellent. Great. Great. Any questions from the board? Any other old business? No, no. Okay, then we'll move to uh, public comment. As I read before, uh, we welcome public comment. Um, it's five minutes. Uh, you're given five minutes to uh, speak and, uh, at the podium, please. And uh, we, we really discourage anybody from commenting or disrupting someone as they speak on the podium. So if you wouldn't mind, it would be nice to hear your name and, uh, um, and your address. And your, okay, and your, uh, address. My name is Gretchen Spencer. I'm at 2 Jennings Court, New Brunswick, New Jersey, 08901. I just started my five minutes. Um, I, I'm trying to find out what can we do to get security back out here because we're catching hell already over there and I'm tired. I, I, I call the cops every other day. We just had a shooting two Sundays ago right there in the church parking lot and whatnot. They're getting, they're getting stupid and they're getting crazy right now. They're smoking too much of that damn weed. <coughs> so, um, we need to get security back out here again. Or get to, matter of fact, what we need, I gotta go down to City Hall, see about building a substation on this side and keep some cops on this side of town if they hire some more. Cause something has to be done. It's, it's getting ridiculous. People don't even live here. They all over people's porches. They, and the kids out can't even play like they want to. They out there smoking their reefer and stuff. <coughs> it's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. Somebody's gonna get hurt soon. And um, that didn't talk. That that didn't work. That wasn't quite five minutes. That's yeah, sure enough. We appreciate your comment. Don't worry, I got you. We, we and, appreciate your comment. And um, yeah. So we have we have to try to do something to get some stuff out. Plus, we need more maintenance. Cause maintenance, the three people you got ain't getting it. We gotta get some more maintenance people working. Somebody that knows what they're doing. Cause you're driving, working with jam or the death. <coughs> And you need somebody else out here that knows what they're doing to work. Some enough people. We used to have four on each side to work. Now we're down to three people. They can't take care of this place like they like it's supposed to. And whatnot. And plus, we got to do something about this extermination around here. These ants is driving me up a wall. They're driving me. A lot of people are complaining about ants in their house and stuff out here, and whatnot. And a lot of people are parking their cars out here that shouldn't be. They're using this place as a place to sell their oh, shut up. As a place to sell their cars. And, and leave their cars parked out here. 
I done had the cop came through the day to check on cars, so I gave him a couple of plate numbers to check already today. And people are dumping their garbage out here. I already done gave a number to Stephen about that. This, this, this has got to stop. They're leaving their garbage. They come in, we ain't got no place to put our own garbage. So it's, this has got to stop. I done told them before, I got the number off the truck. Luckily, the exterminator did that for me and gave me the number. So I left that number with Stephen and whatnot. What you need? No, I'm just going to ask the chair. So um, can you just make sure that I get, that you follow up with him? Because I know there were three or four that he got. So, yeah. Thank you. I, I called Stephen today and talked with him earlier, but I got to call him thank back you. tomorrow about that and, and whatnot. But there needs to be a serious inspection going on around out here because stuff is falling apart. I went and did a walkthrough through them new apartments down there. I tell you, they look better than what we got. They look much better. And you're right. They look much better. This place is, their pipes are busting. The, you know, Was there one underneath the underneath pipes are busting so bad that they had to drain, put people out of their apartments because the water level was coming up to the electrical system. So this place needs to be torn down, rebuilt, and I'm gonna keep trying till I die or or something. I, I get to where I can't talk no more. Because it, it's a shame we got to live like this. There's so much mold. I can't go into people's apartments before I get to the door and I start coughing. There's, no child should have to live like this out here. This has to be, it has to be taken care of. It has to be redone. And they're building up all downtown, but nothing on this side is getting done right. Nothing on this side of town, and it's ridiculous. I think we should need, try to help everybody in New Brunswick, not just a few. So they done rebuilt Somerset, they done rebuilt downtown. Perth and Boy and Patterson is starting to rebuild. They younger than we are. We the oldest projects is in New Jersey. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need a new mayor, that's what we need. If we can get to them, they might make me run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'd be a little bit better than what we got. <laughs> <laughs> it, it may not be much, but it'll be a little bit better than what we got. But that's what I want to say when Lou try. I want to try to get this place fixed up like it's supposed to be, because it's bad. It's really when I say bad, it's bad. Y'all don't. And if y'all move out here, y'all wouldn't want to live out here. They ain't gonna move out here. No. Mm -mm. That's why I said it needs to be fixed up better than what it is. New Brunswick can do better. They, they're fixing up downtown so they can start trying to do out here like they're supposed to. Well, thanks for your comment, Gretchen. We're keeping track of time, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, baby. Okay. Anyone else? I'll talk to you. <laughs> Charlie, you can name and address. Okay. Gretchen? 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 Is that yours? It's yours, right? Oh, thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. Good evening, members of the board, Charles Cranville. I'm uh, from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick Today, a community newspaper here. Um, at the last meeting, I was told to put questions in writing. I put them in writing, haven't gotten the answers yet. Mr. Clark did get back to me, but said he needs more time. So I'm bringing up some concerns here. Um, if I may approach, I have two documents I want to share with you guys. Please feel free to share, but again, this is public comment. So, sure. You know, not, not a question and answer. So just please take, take one of each and pass it down. What you'll see here is um, your budget. And you'll see highlighted is the amount for legal uh, is 18000 But then you'll see what's actually been spent on it is way, way, way more. And this is what I thought might be happening and why I've been asking about it since at least November. Um, I did file over requests and got some documents that, uh, well, it's hard to tell exactly what the money was spent on because it's all blacked out, but it's lawyers. And uh, if the budget is $18,000 for the year, well, you've already spent $57,000 just for this fiscal year. 
Um, if you want to think about the prior fiscal year ending in uh, 2017, you spent $128,000. And that's again with an $18,000 budget. And the prior year, I believe the budget was the same. Uh, might have been $20,000 that year. You spent $79,000 on legal. So uh, I, I, I need to know what, why are you still budgeting such a small number if you're going to be spending so much more? What is this money going towards? What, 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 what are these expenses? Why so much on lawyers? The authority constantly says that you're strapped for cash, you don't have enough money. Um, why, why so much for the lawyers? Any other comments, John? Okay. As, as indicated last time, you don't have to answer the questions, but it looks really bad when you don't. Um, I'll move on. Another document to share with you. It was mentioned that uh, downtown being, being built up. I can see that you've, uh, uh, you're anticipating $180,000 in redevelopment revenue. Can you please ask the executive director to indicate uh, where that money is going to come from? And you've asked this in writing, right? You've asked, you've requested this in writing, so they're, they're working. No, as a matter of fact, this is a question that I'm asking tonight. Okay. So yeah. can you please ask the executive director where that money is going to come from? They're working on responding to your questions in writing, so they'll respond at that time. Okay, so again, that's a non-answer. And so just for perspective here, um, last year you only brought in 5000 in redevelopment fees. And I know that we had a conversation where we talked about, um, you know, why is the Housing Authority and the Redevelopment Authority the same thing? Aren't they at cross purposes is kind of my perspective. And you said, well, there's all this redevelopment money that's coming in. But this year, so far, this fiscal year, only $25,000. So people that are building, uh, getting approved, selected by this board to be the designated redeveloper for a project that's a $106 million project, 186 units, luxury housing. It's going to be, they're going to make boatloads of money. The city's about to give them a tax abatement. They pay just 10 grand. 10 grand. That doesn't even cover. A, a month of the lawyers sometimes. So I think that things are way out of whack with the budget. I gotta be honest, the budget paints a very different picture than what's actually happening with the money. The money is not being not coming in from the developers at the rate that your budget anticipates, and the money is being sent to the lawyers at a rate far higher. Like I said, uh, you know, fifty-seven thousand dollars so far this fiscal year. The fiscal year is only halfway done. Uh, and you're looking at three times what you budgeted already. So I think that something needs to be done about this, and I don't know who's responsible for putting together the budget, but there needs to be more oversight. So I'm glad there's a new member on the board, and uh, I would like to ask, can you tell me why the new member has not been sworn in yet? I have, I have no idea. And so, again, as I said, I mean, ask the questions, Charlie, and, okay. and, and again, I mean, you know, part of this, you know the answer to this. I mean, you, your open request caused lawyer fees, and and you, you've actually, you are actually the source of a lot of the legal fees. And so, you know, that that you know. And so it's kind of, it's weird that you're sitting here it's asking not, these questions. Okay. Uh, it shouldn't be weird because you, should, you don't need to pay a lawyer $125 an hour to take a black marker and cross stuff out. You can just give the actual documents that reveal what's going on. But instead, you go out of your way to hide what's going on. Charlie. And, and, and by the way, there's another member on the board. We're five minutes and 15 seconds. There's so a, there's so five a, minutes and 15 seconds. As I said, a lot of legal fees are generated because of your requests. You know that. You a lot of the budget issues. That if you cross it out, sir. A lot of the budget issues that you've talked about. You're, you're out of time. I have the floor. A lot of the budget issues you talk about are way off base. You don't know how to read the budget. And so if you really look at where the revenue is coming from, it's very different than what you're saying. And so you don't really understand the complexities of HUD, of the state of New Jersey. I used to be Deputy Commissioner for Department of Community Affairs. So I actually understand how it works. You obviously don't. So as I said, you, if you're interested, you know, send a letter. You've, get, you've sent about 150 requests. It takes time to respond to your request, and they'll answer those questions and, and hopefully educate you on how to read the budget. Thank you very much. <coughs> So sir, any other comments? Sir, you oh, any not, other comments? You, you, Charlie, you've you, had your five you minutes. You can't say that it's because of me 
when you don't share what it actually is that they're doing. Are there any other comments? You're not sharing what they're doing. You just want to blame it on me. Charlie, Have you, do you look through the Charlie, bills? I, I like do you look through the bills before you adopt them every time? You don't deserve any more time than anybody else. Five minutes. They're residents here. We want to give them a chance to, to, to talk. Are there any residents who'd like to speak? Anybody else like to speak? Yes. Please come up and state your address. My name is Tina Jones. I live here in 30 Great Place. Very much. Uh, around the corner of the street. I wanted to reiterate on what Ms. Gretchen was talking about as far as the redevelopment of these buildings. Now, before I moved here, I didn't hang up here or anything like that, but um, these buildings are old. They're done, they're ran down, they're falling apart. They're, it's sad. It is very much sad. I've been here for about 11 and a half years and all it's doing is still breaking down. You send maintenance in to fix it up, but all they do, they're not even putting a full band-aid on because what they're doing is just They're patching. Patching. And that patch fall off, and then they repatch, and then it's still repatching. It's not even a full band-aid. It's just a patch of glop, glop, falling all over the place. And raising young children in these type of conditions, um, it's very dangerous. You might, you know, I know you have test the waters and everything like that, but as far as the living conditions of these buildings, it's very dangerous for these young kids growing up in these buildings. And like Ms. Gretchen was talking about how they're redoing all these buildings around the city and outside the city and everything like that, and Brunswick is still stuck in the same place it was when I was growing up in the early 90s. Right there. Nothing changed. There's no refacing. You're rebuilding, but you're not, you're not, uh, how should I put it? Shining the light on the one, on the, on the issues that's really, really the problem. You're just trying to sweep it up under the rug and build on the outside thinking it's going to make the inside better, and it's not. It's making it very much worse, and I think these conditions of these buildings is making it keeping kids sicker as well. Whether you don't have lead paint or in, in the household or not, the the, it's, it's old. It's very much old. It's, like I said, we're 11 and a half years. I'm almost 38, and I know those buildings are older than me. I know that's old. And painting over dirt, don't get rid of ooh, what's behind it. It don't get rid of it at all. It just grows out of it and it spends more. And then next, you know, you wonder why your kid can't get rid of a cough. And they're not sick, but there's a problem. And I hope you really hear me because when I stood up here at this last meeting, I never got a straightforward answer far as when I asked about the waiting list for a three bedroom. My son is about to be five, five years old in May, and I've been on here since he got here on this earth. And still no response. All I hear is, oh, they're not doing anything, they're doing anything, but now there's a meeting, and I get a paper of a notice that there's a meeting today, and that you're only opening the two bedrooms. I never got a full response on why isn't there any, if you want more openness, so I'm moving people in other places, but in more safer conditions. <coughs> and so, can someone please answer that question? Why isn't the waiting list being moved at all? Am I supposed to stay in the same place for the next five years? Yep. Still no response. Yep. And my yep. son, ten yep. years old. Next, yep. you know, he's going to tell me he, he, he still has to sleep in the bed in, in my room. No, <laughs> I have two girls, and it's me. No, this it's it's been going on a little too long. Enough is enough. So can someone please around. give me an answer now? Because I really don't want to come back to the next meeting and ask the same question again. I would very much appreciate it because they don't live there. Can you, in between meetings, can you speak with, with uh, the executive director's office? And, and they'll answer the question. And say what? The, the exact question that you're asking. Chair, I did I'm that sorry. last time. I'm sorry, Chair. You have to actually uh, go through the procedure of being on the transfer list. She's going to need to meet in person to go through the procedure right. to see what I'm date. on the list. To see what date she submitted her request and where she is in the transfer list. She's saying that no one told her that. It's a personal issue. I've been it's on the list before right. I got, since I've been on the list every time I ask, either whether it's around recertification or in between, 
There's nothing going on at all. You're not the only one. There's a lot of people. We'd have to get the property management to do that to check on the transfer list because everything is time and date. That's what we say. Yep. So I'll I'll get a hold of her and you'll be you'll get a written response. Why is the property manager here? Ask this question. What is to y'all, to Calvin Stanton, to Brother Calvin Stanton, how long does that process take? Because if I have yeah, one right. boy and it's three females in the house, and you're telling me he still has to share a room with someone, how old does he have to be before you separate him from the rest of his siblings in his own space? Can someone please add, answer that for me? What is the proper time to your standards a lot of people out here for, like them, for him to wait? The transfer list has a procedure chair, so, so, yeah, yeah, so, so, so we do everything the, in writing. I still yeah. didn't hear a number. Well, yeah, yeah, you, you have to meet with them privately. This is your own personal issue with them, and so you have to meet with them privately. No, this is a public problem. Yes. This is a whole community over. problem. Because yes. I just read a long list of when you were here. Yeah, okay. Really, you know, it's, it's very rude to the people on the podium for people okay. to speak in the audience. And, and if you want to speak next, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm now, saying. You that said that last time, and I still never heard did, anything. Did you meet with anybody? I didn't meet with no one. Okay, but you have no to meet with. What, what we're saying is no we have to meet with someone. So I have to go chase y'all for this? No, sure. No, sorry, could you stay after and just see me so I can get your phone number? Yeah. <laughs> I gave it to you last time. I haven't met. Yeah. I gave it to you. I walked up to the table right in front of oh, you and gave you my name and right. my you're number and my address. The property manager didn't get back to you, so that's why I wanted to get it. Never did. Why isn't she here? <laughs> Who was the committee woman out here? I thought it was a dude. It's the same person, the property manager. She's, she works here. She ain't supposed to be the committee yeah. woman. All right, next. Five okay. Okay. Please, please let me just nail it out. You have five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else? They ain't going to do nothing. Yes, I like that. Yeah, please come on up, state your name and, and address. <laughs> Disgraceful and how much there's been a cutback. 
I mean, we're at, at what, John, we're 50% of the staff from 10 years ago? Well, less. less than 50% of the staff. The revenue has gone down you know, significantly. Costs have gone up. The buildings are old. And so we hear your pain. We hear your pain. We need, we need help reaching out to Washington, which is really who's making the funding. Congress is making the funding. And so as much as, as we would love to say, we'd love to you know, spend an extra $2 million to renovate the buildings, tear buildings down, and build them up, we just don't have it. And so we need your help in really, really rallying the White House and other places to say, folks have been living here, and the quality of housing across this country has gone down. Yes, it's gone has. down. Yes, and this is not just New Brunswick. This is everywhere. And so we feel your pain. We sit here, and, and, and anybody who knows me knows how much I care about, uh, about the residents of, of, of urban communities. And, and it's tough. But, but if you haven't written a letter to Washington, if you haven't talked to Frank Pallone, if you haven't done that, you, you know, you can come to these meetings all you want. Oh, I'm on my way down to his office but, tomorrow. Please do. And, and tell them that housing authorities are important, that they're important. Tax breaks are nice, but tax breaks, the housing authority people, you're not on the backs of people with the housing authority. So, so it really, honestly, we feel your pain, and, and I really appreciate you coming here, and I know it takes bravery to come here in front of a camera, you're here talking to the audience, and, and you feel like the board is sitting here, we don't care. We do care. We absolutely do care. And we do not discount anything that we're hearing in here. But there's only so much. If you really look at what's happened to this housing authority, I've only been on, what, five years? It's in, just in some five years I've been here. It's frankly disgraceful at how people from urban communities have been treated. And, and we, we as a group need to do something about that. Yeah. We really do. Because you're pushing everybody from downtown out here to sell their drugs, do their drugs, and everything. Downtown's being built up, but nothing's being done out here. And, and, and that's a lot of the federal funding. So, so with, with that, is there anybody else want to comment? We encourage you. Yes, please come up, up say your name and, and address if you would. My name is Duran Sullivan and I live in 116 Wright Place. Now I've been I grew up out here and I've known Miss Elsie as well. <laughs> but I have an apartment that I've been living in for 18 years. And I've always worked, I've always paid my rent. It may be late. But it's paid, <laughs> okay? Like they saw me in court two times since I was here. I have one son, and I've been going through a lot of changes, and John is aware of this, with my rent being calculated wrong all the time. Amen. Amen. And I've been fighting this, and when I say I'm not paying pennies, I've been paying over a thousand dollars, close to a thousand dollars. This crap. Living over here. Now, you say nothing is it, it, it's it's a funding problem. No. Before you get to that, there's a problem within this housing authority. Mm -hmm. and because Amen. when you when they come in and inspect these apartments, the first thing one of their inspectors do is there anything wrong in here? No. You need to inspect these apartments the way that you supposed it, what you're being paid for. You don't come in and ask me, oh, is there anything else wrong? Anything else wrong? You can walk around these apartments and you can see there's a, a lot wrong in these apartments. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been there 18 years. Not once have, when the state come in to inspect the, these mm -hmm. apartments, HUD has never come in here in 18 years. <coughs> First of all, when they get ready to come, if there are repairs that need to be done that the inspector come in and write down, you know when they come in and do these repairs sometimes? Mm -hmm. Knocking on your door on Sunday. Why? Because the state get ready to come in and check this out. They only go to certain apartments mm -hmm. that they know that is not raggedy Amen. and have problems. I Amen. stood outside and I've watched it. Okay. When they do come, when you do call and there's something wrong in your apartment, they come in and they do the, excuse my expression, but they do the shittiest job. <laughs> I got pictures in my phone where I can show you before and after what stuff is looking like. You call. 
And if you don't make a big deal about the fact that <coughs> this is wear and tear, this is old, you're getting a bill in the mail. That you got to pay for something that you could clearly see should have been changed years ago. Okay? Now, I called recently because in the winter time, I had a whole bunch of cold air coming in under my door. So I called them and I said, something, you need to come and put a guard. This is the second time though. My apartment, before I moved in, had been raided. So the whole door frame and everything is all messed up. They come, the first time they put a piece of wood there because it was raised up. That was the first time. The second time, which was this few months ago, I came over here and I said, listen, I got a lot of cold air coming in that door. My living room is cold, upstairs is cold. And, and they asked me, do you want someone to come in if you're not home? No, no I don't. Because there's been times that I've done that and I've come home and my windows are unlocked, my back door is unlocked. They left my stuff open. So, the very next day, someone came in my house and put something under there. So, when I called and I asked them who came in my house without my permission, I got about four calls from Danny, the maintenance manager. He kept back and forth with me saying, none of my guys came in the house. None of my guys came in the house. Okay, well, guess what? Somebody came in my house. Oh, I investigated. Then I got, that's not even my, our piece. That doesn't come for us. We don't, we don't even have that. You know, these are the kind of excuses you get. You know, you got people entering. Instead of him just saying, you know what? One of the guys don't want to get in trouble because they entered your home without your permission. But he went back and forth and gave me all these excuses as to, you know, what might have happened. That's unacceptable. So, I'm just saying to you that these are some of the things that goes on when you are calling to get things fixed. I had a leak in my bathroom, right? When you walk in the door, I call about that. You can see a crack. You know what they did? They came in here, they stuck a hole in the ceiling, and <laughs> left it. <laughs> mold in my bathroom. I called about the mold around the tub, it needed to be caught. Mm. They come in there, I have a piece, and I can show you these pictures. I have a piece where it's pulled out from the wall. I had a mice problem in there. Mm. I called and I said, listen, I got mice coming in my house. I don't have a dirty house. So, so we're we're at the we're at the five minutes. So now, have you have you do you have those problems still now? Oh yeah. Okay. The sink is in, the, and, around the groove of the sink. And, and can, okay. Can can you um, can you make sure that you talk to, to yeah, 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 yeah 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 so 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 they'll follow up. Thank you for bringing the concerns to us. Okay. So it. I I mean I, I wish I would have known I only had five minutes because it's a whole lot more that you do need okay. to know. Well, well thank you. And, and Especially you, with this rent problem. When you talk to them. You know, when you talk to them, please let them know. Yeah. Well, they know. Yeah, well, but you, How many again, times do you got to tell somebody the same, same thing problem. over and over? Yeah. The problem is, well, 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 is, is who well, you well, have in the office that placing people in these apartments that are putting their friends in here and well, that, their family well, that, that, and jumping people on the list. Well, I appreciate see, it. I appreciate yeah, it. I bet you do because, see, this is the problem. You guys don't want to hear the real truth about these things. Yeah. So one of the things that's important to understand is that <laughs> as a board, we're a policy-making body. We are not, we overstep our bounds. If we, if we are managing what goes on, if we, if we bypass John or we, we order John, you know, my friend is in this apartment, <coughs> fix that. That's not our role. We're policy. We're sitting here to set the policies. We're here to, 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 to look at the budget. We're here to really, really kind of uh, challenge some of the things that go on. But when it comes to specific issues like my roof is leaking and other things, we can't and we shouldn't do anything about that. We can ask John, what's the story? He's come back every meeting and have you fixed it? And he'll say, yes, I did or I didn't. But that's really important to know. So when you come here, that's not our role. And we're overstepping our bounds if we step into operations. 
And that's critical. And that's what a board person does. A board person is not a staff person. We do not get paid. We're volunteers. Can I ask you one question? Okay, so if you have a major problem and you've come to them over and over and nothing is done and you contact HUD, are you, do you have anything to do with HUD? With, with me. Well, HUD oversees the authority. You right. Know, HUD oversees because the there's a problem with HUD. They, they, don't answer, they won't answer the phone and they won't return calls. Well, well we can't control that. We have nothing to do with that. So, all right, are there any other, any other comments from the public? Yeah, we do have a closed session. So, um, hearing that, will you read the, the closed session? Yeah, we have board a resolution to, uh, to enter into closed session to deal with a attorney-client privilege matter. Um, John Mann, do you want that? Uh, Might say just one thing, y'all. We're starting a resident council, like y'all don't know, but we can ready to start a resident council, and I'm running for resident council president, and a few of us. Well, who is the right, committee right, woman so, out here? So, we so don't know. I don't know who the committee woman is, but we're going to find out if I can run for that. Do it. Yes. Come on. Uh, you need the, I'm sorry, you need an action going on. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, motion, 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 motion to close motion 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 motion